Good day, everyone. I'm Bill Green. I'm a parishioner here at Trinity Episcopal Church, and this is the first in our series of interviews with distinguished members of our congregation. We're starting to learn the history of Trinity, and our first guest is Joan Delator, one of the most pleasant and nice and likable people I've ever met. And Joan, how long have you been coming to Trinity Episcopal Church? Since 1954. Why did you come here? Because the fellow I was seeing at the time came here, and we ended up getting engaged at Christmas and married in 1955. Ooh. Did he get down on one knee? No, what but he, he put the ring in a box with a piece of lead in the bottom, and then another box and another box, and I had to owe about four boxes to get to the ring. And it was at my parents' house, and they were there, and they knew about it. Yep. It was Christmas Eve. Great moment. Tell me about your wedding. It was lovely. It was a beautiful day in September. And one funny thing that happened is Pratt Abbott lost his suit. Ooh. And they went all over the kitchen to find it on Sunday, which was a holiday. Mm -hmm. And that's what, in one of my pictures, he's carrying a suit in a cleater bag. No kidding. And you were married here, and the altar and the reredos were behind you. If you're sitting in Trinity, it's to the right. Mm -hmm. That's the way the church used to run before the big right. sanctuary was built. Right. And who presided? Shirley B. Goodwin. How was Shirley B. Goodwin? He was wonderful, very nice. Did he give you uh, Episcopal instruction? Like, uh, You know, we didn't, well, we did a little bit of premarital counseling, but I don't think it was anything like it is now. Yep. And I want to talk a little bit about the church. What do you remember about the wedding? Uh, it wasn't the same pews this way. How was Trinity before this uh, addition of the sanctuary, which we sit in now, when the church sat this way, how was it as a venue for a wedding? Well, it was smaller, but of course in those days the weddings were smaller. Too. Yeah. It was adequate and it was very mm -hmm. welcoming. Mm -hmm. Good looking couple. How, do you remember how many people were there? I don't. I know, probably at least 50, maybe yeah. 70. And you exited stage left, as we say. Out on Coyle Street. On Coyle Street. Mm -hmm. Wonderful day for you. Yeah, it was fabulous. Yeah. Tell me about the reception in Lincoln Hall. And we have a picture of Lincoln Hall, and it hasn't changed a bit. No, sir. We had it catered by a couple, and I wish I could think of their names, a couple who went here. Yeah. And they did the catering, and it was just lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, were you welcomed into Trinity? Was everybody nice to you when you oh, showed up? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And they even had a couples club at that time, which we were in. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what did the couples club do? I mean, it, well, they usually just had a meal or entertainment here in the here. Lincoln Hall. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. You know, the men's group is coming back a little bit. Peter's got that going. I know. And we got about eight guys that show up, and we just, we don't do much yet, but we go to a ball game or we have a cookout or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's great that there's at least that loose organization you get to know people. Yeah, a I think bit. it's really great. Yeah. Um, so you raised your family in this church. How many kids did you have? Four. And they were all baptized here. Yep. And let's see, two of them were confirmed. Yep. And, uh, yep. and their names are? Lynn. Lynn. Billy. Yep. Gary. Yep. And Cindy. Now, I knew Gary a bit because Gary is Melissa Delator's father, and Melissa was the star softball player on a team my daughter Emily played on. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you Melissa's story. She gets something from you. We're playing somewhere, could have been anywhere from Quebec to Virginia, and Melissa's the, the, one of the two star pitchers. And she's standing on the mound, and there's some kind of a fuss among the coaches, and I was not a coach. And Melissa's just standing there ready to pitch, and this guy's yelling, that guy's yelling, and she's just standing there looking at them. And she never moved. And the thing went on for a minute and a half, two minutes. You know how a rhubarb will go on. And then they finally got the coaches bat in the dugout, and the umpire stood behind the mound and said, play ball. And she went, whew, boom, strike three. <laughs> I mean, she was the most composed kid. It was the most amazing. I would have said, step off, go back through your setup again. She just waited a minute and a half through a strike, you know. Great kid. And like her grandmother, she's brilliant, getting a PhD this week. Yes. Beautiful, talented, great player. Uh, so where did you live in the 50s when you started out here at Trinity as a young married woman? As a young married woman, we lived on Florida Avenue, yeah. which is over near where Emily lives. Yeah, my daughter Emily lives over and off, like between May and Allen Avenue mm -hmm. extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the funny thing is we got married in September, and in November, Dick got a draft notice. Oh. And 
and he had to go into the, well, he went into the Navy because when they tested, he tested quite well, and they hadn't met their quota in the Navy, so they asked him he could choose yeah. Army or Navy, and he chose Navy. Where'd he go? He was stationed in Newport, yeah. luckily, got yeah. home a lot. But when I had my first daughter, Lynn. In what year? He was in 1957. I gotta get to this. How old were you when you had Lynn? Uh, 20, 21. 21, so yeah. we're, are we looking at a 19 year old bride? No, 20. 20, 20. That's young these days. I know. Yeah. Well, you're, we, well, I'm wondering if I was 20, no, I was 21. Because okay. she was born in 57 and my birthday would have been September. Uh, you were 21 been. when you had Lynn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a young woman having kids. In, and he was in, in the Mediterranean. And he's in the Mediterranean. But I will tell you why it's wonderful to get married when you're young, because it yeah. makes you a young grandmother. Yeah, I'm an old grandfather. <laughs> uh, my two, two grandsons, I also have a granddaughter, but the two grandsons are going to Trinity uh, Day School. They're right downstairs oh, right now. Oh, wow. And when Will was born in January, I got thinking, if I'm at his high school graduation, I'll be 86. Not good. So if I had my 20s to do over, I'd, you know, Pam wouldn't like this because I didn't know her then, but I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd marry some high school girl and get on with it. But, but it, um, it is great being a grandparent and uh, uh, you, you've had that wonderful experience or having it. Tell me about raising kids in Trinity Church and about who the rectors were here and what was going on here in the 50s and 60s. I'm trying to remember. I think after Shirley Goodwin, <clears throat> I think it was Clyde Cox, I'm yep. pretty sure. Yep. He was here quite a long time. He yep. had a family. And uh, and then I don't Is know. that when we're building this yeah, thing? Yeah, because we started this in the 60s. So what's, yeah, this is about 64 or 5 okay. they finished this. Yeah. How, um, what's Trinity like then? I'll tell you what, it wasn't quite as friendly as it is now. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, everyone who was here was friendly, but when someone new came, it didn't seem like they were treated like they are now. Old school Episcopalians I guess. from the goldfish eating era of the 50s. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've heard some mumbles that it was filled with big, impressive lawyers who thought they were important. Oh, yeah. We yeah. had a lot of lawyers and a couple of doctors, I'm and sure. We had some power here. Cause, yeah. Because were people coming from the neighborhood? Who came to Trinity then? Did you go to your local church? Did you go eight, ten blocks and that was good? Or Yeah, I think mostly people did go to their local churches. Yeah. yeah. Where, where were these people living? Were they down on Clifton, down towards the bay and up on oh, the Oh, I'm sure right around this area. Yeah. yeah. I know when Ann Shea moved here, they were in this area and they came here. Yeah. They Ann, were Ann told me she started the, I think it's the Oakmont Residence Group or yeah, something. Yeah, that park. Got, yeah. Yeah, where they had the terrible yeah. fire. That was awful. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me about some of your experiences at Trinity. And we only have like six hours, so don't tell me too many. But, <laughs> you know, when you think of Trinity, what was important for your family when the kids were young? Well, the Sunday school was great. The teachers were wonderful. They're all gone now, I'm sure. But... Uh, and it was small groups, and we had it in Lincoln Hall, and they would put little dividers up, you know. Yep. And uh, it was just really nice. Yep. Yeah. And I think it's great to have your kids churched. Uh, you know, my kids, they don't show up very often. You know, the old submarine Episcopalians. No. Nope. Christmas and Easter, they pop their heads up yeah, twice a year. Yeah, my daughter calls herself a creaster. Christmas, Easter. Mm. Okay, yeah. But I think it's good to be churched. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. Uh, I, I know somebody whose mother would take a boat to go to church on Sundays sometimes in the summer. Wow. And the grandchild didn't know what the Lord's Prayer was. Oh. Now, I'm not saying couldn't say it, didn't know what it was. Yeah. And I just think if you appreciate art and, mutual and mu music and culture, you ought to, you know, it's good to church a kid just mm -hmm. because right and wrong and golden rules yep. and some of those things. If they can sit through Peter's sermons and survive that, it, it, it toughens them up. Who were some of your favorite rectors? Well, I like Shirley Goodwin a lot and yep. Clyde Cox and um, Betty LaMaya. Yes, well, Betty LaMaya Gilmore. Had, and then she remarried, but she was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, yep, she was wonderful. I enjoyed her a lot. I got here for Betty. That, and, that's the early okay. 90s, and that's when the Greens show up. And then, of course, when David Holroyd was our, um, what was he? He wasn't the rector. Interim, was, I guess. Yeah, interim. Thank you so much. I forgot. Give me your favorite David he Holroyd story. He was wonderful. Well, 
when we had uh, the Super Bowl. Yep. He had a Patriot shirt <laughs> under his. He's wearing his vestment. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And and he, uh, it was Ty Law. He He's got a, 24 on, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. He's got on his white vestment, and the number 24 is visible through it on Super Bowl Sunday. It was yeah. great. But I was on the vestry once and um, when he was here, and we were going to, um, oh, that place in Spitterford. Oh, the circular place? Uh, no, I don't know. Where mean. you have retreats. Yeah, no, it's an old orchard, right? No, I think it's in What Bitterford. is it? Marie St. Joseph's. Thank you, Peter. And uh, anyway, Betty had made the appointment. Yeah. Well, when we got there, the people said, oh, no, you're not supposed to be here until next week. Oh, no kidding. And, and my gosh, they made do with what they had for us. They shared their dinner with us, and, yeah. and we finally yeah, had it right yeah. there. It was awesome. Yeah. And David was so cool about everything. You know? um, and how often were you on vestry? Uh, I don't know if I did more than one term. I ended up being the clerk for a while. Yeah. But on that vestry was a few lawyers. Name a couple of famous people that well, were here. Nathan Sawyer. I mean, uh, Smith. Smith. Sorry. Mm -hmm. God, what's the matter? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm old. Um, uh, and then Dave Hartwell was on there. Yeah. And um, oh, one. Uh, you know, the famous guy that went here was Amos, Angus King. Did you know that? He went here? Angus went here in the 80s. Don't touch your microphone and make a, oh, a noise. That's okay. Yeah. I don't remember that, yep. but you know, I took a little lull when um, Carl was here. I loved Carl. Carl? Carl Russell. Carl Russell. But a okay. little into the time of his here, being here, he uh, got like, quite chariz charismatic. charismatic. Yeah, I understand he went off to something and, and I came kind back. Of, I kind of wasn't into that, so I stayed away for a while. How did the church service change? When he was well, there was a lot of the you know waving of arms things and, and yeah. it wasn't that Episcopal the old. I guess you know. I don't know. It didn't. Yeah, I've heard that, and, and there was kind of a big, I don't want to say a split, but th that was a controversial era. Yeah, the there was. Tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah. There was a guy named Henry Saunders was here at the time, and I don't think they got along at all. He was a major person here too. He was like a vestry. Uh, yeah. I should know what that's called because I was that. What's that called? Grand High Poobah, the vestry. Well, senior warden. Oh, senior warden. Senior warden. Yeah. Let me fix your mic because this reflects. No, it's not you. I should have taped that. And then uh, when John Wolverton was here, I, I got a little turned off too. But the payoff was when my daughter Lynn had her second daughter, Kristen, she asked to have her baptized here. Yep. And they lived in Wyndham. And he said, well, no, she should be baptized in the church where you live. Well, at the time, Ruth Barnard and Emma Houston were in the office. Mm -hmm. And I guess they changed John's mind because she was christened here. I think one of them grabbed his elbow and the other <laughs> one punched him and came around to I the proper I don't think he knew the it. history of our family. We've been yeah. here forever. Sure. And Lynn, you know, was on, in the youth group, went to Bishopswood and, you know, mm -hmm. the whole shebang. Now, Ruth Barnard, see, that's, to me, this is awful to word it this way, but I'll be honest, it's just an award. Tell me about Ruth Barnard. Ruth Barnard was a wonderful lady. She was married to the safety, safety man, Alan Barnard. Okay. He used to be on the radio with the safety man or something. Okay. And she worked in the office, I'm sure, for no pay. And Emma Houston and her husband went here, and Emma worked with her. And they handled everything, but they knew everything about everybody. Yeah. And... Uh, I think they ran the show. Yeah. Wow. And this Peter Swore guy, how's he doing? I think he's great. I think he's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited that he's here. and He's so energetic and, and enthusiastic with the kids and everyone. I just, yeah. and he's giving us all these opportunities for services. Yeah. And some people can't be here. That's yeah. really nice. Um, what are some of the things you want people to know about Trinity? Like, Tell me a, a secret story about that window or, you know, you've been on, uh-oh, what's the committee that... Alter Guild. Alter Guild for a long time. I'd still like to be, but I'm a little bit slow now. <laughs> Tell me things that someone on the Alter Guild for a long time knows that I should know. They're a very dedicated group yeah. and uh, they teach you how to do everything and I don't know. It's just a very dedicated group. They pitch in. We used to have some wonderful potlucks. We haven't had any since Peter was here. Yeah. 
<laughs> you got to get him off the snide on that. <laughs> what uh, service did you most enjoy? Do you have a favorite? Like, I like a baptism, and my grandson Will was baptized. I love him. Yeah, I was um, here. I, they can make me cry if yeah, I'm, you know. it is. It's very nice. And I, I like some of the funerals. I mean, mm. they're wonderful. Unfortunately, sometimes you can't hear people talk, though, on that mic. We're going to work it. Yeah, We're gonna work really, it. that's a sad thing. But mm. other than that, and I've been, uh, Beth and I used to Beth be Jones. here for weddings. Yeah. Yeah. And we, yeah. we would Dick's just do it. Was funeral here? Pardon me? Was your husband's funeral it here? It was. Oh. And you know, it was when Betty Lemire, or well, what was her name? Betty Lemire Gilmore. Gilmore, thank yeah. you. Yeah. When she had decided to go on a sabbatical. Yeah. So on uh, the night before Easter, they had a vigil and they had baptism. Yeah. And my youngest granddaughter, Edie, yeah. And Donna Coughlin's uh, grandson were baptized that night, and Betty was the one who did it. And Dick came, and I, he didn't really feel like it. And I said, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't. He said, are you kidding? This is probably the last one to be baptized. I'm going. And he and Betty had a little chat after the service, and I could see they were both, like, you know, weepy. Well, about two weeks later, he died, and she was on sabbatical. So we had, um, oh yeah, now I'm going to forget again. David Holroyd. No, a okay. guy, oh. It doesn't matter, it was an interim guy? It, it matters because he was wonderful. Okay. Um, he's at St. Luke's a lot. Oh, Sam Henderson. Sam Henderson. Uh, oh, he's oh great. My God, thank you so much. And he came to our neighborhood to speak to us. Yeah. But he went to the people next door. And she didn't even know Dick had died. Oh my goodness. I don't know why, but she didn't. So anyway, um, he called and we met here, and yeah. the family met here and planned it. He was absolutely wonderful. He was. He didn't even know him, and he, he was just great. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sam Henderson. A lot of good people in service. All right, anything else you got for us before we wrap this up? It's great to talk to you. You're such a delight at church. You're such an important member of this congregation. I don't know why you're so happy and pleasant and nice, but you sure are. Well, I'm very lucky. I have a wonderful family. I feel good when I just walk in this place. Something happens, I don't know, and that's why I love coming now. Yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. I feel like I get, as the week goes on, I get busy, and I get hepped up, and I get, and I'm not as thoughtful and kind as I should be for a guy that's had so much given to him, you know what I mean? And I come here, and I sit back, and Usually something's said that kind of, you know, I'm like Homer Simpson, go, you know, and <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm going to be better. And I am for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but by Thursday, I need to get back to church again. But the best thing I could ever say about Trinity is the people. I'm, they're just wonderful. Great. Joan, thanks so much. Thanks for being such a, a good friend here and supportive and kind and nice and all the work you've done. And it's a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, thanks for kicking off our interview series. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. We'll, we'll see you again soon with another special Trinity parishioner.